everybody again. Uh, welcome to the fourth lecture in this series of NPTEL online certification courses. Uh, the topic of this lecture or the heading of this lecture is basically MOS parasitics and spice models. What we will be covering in the next uh, half an hour or so uh, is basically the, uh, the various capacitances of a MOS structure. So, we will be looking into the MOS structure and how, how it works as a MOS device, we have already seen that. Uh, we have also seen uh, two important parameters that how can a MOS device under short channel effects behaves and under long channel effects behaves. Uh, we have seen how can a MOS can be used as a switch. A very important property of any digital VLSI design or chip is to find out the total delay of the signal moving from primary input to primary output of a logic. Which means that one of the important properties of uh, parameters or properties of digital VLSI chip or for digital chip is to find out uh, delay. Why delay is important? Because ultimately you should know that what maximum frequency that chip can perform. So, 1 upon delay of that will give you the maximum frequency. Therefore, to understand the delay, two very important properties of the device are resistances and capacitances as you are very well aware of this fact possibly. Why capacitance? Because see, if there are larger capacitances, you require larger amount of time to charge and discharge the capacitance. And similarly, if the resistance is high, your on currents will be low and therefore, you require a larger amount of time to charge or discharge the capacitor. In both the cases, your delay will be large and therefore, it is quite essential and very important that we study what is the capacitance model of a MOS structure. Therefore, given a MOS structure, I will be designing its capacitances, how a capacitance looks like. Out of which, uh, what are the important properties? The first property is MOS over there are there are parts of capacitor and one of them is basically the overlap capacitance. We will look at channel capacitances, we will look at junction capacitances. We will be also looking at, so this will take care of our capacitance modeling of a device. Similarly, we also need to know the source to drain resistance. That means, the resistance offered by the device between source to drain. But the very important property or characteristics is all these two things R and C are all bias dependent, which means that its value will go on changing as you apply various biases across the network, right. Unlike other properties, structural properties for example, they do not change with bias, but resistances and capacitance will change with respect to bias because, uh, because of the simple reason that that the amount of voltage which you give will determine how much amount amount of current will be flowing through the. We look into the source to drain resistance, then we go to spice model. Why spice model? Because we will be giving you assignments during the assignment phase, we will be giving assignment on spice. So, I would I would recommend that at this stage, please download open source available a spice package from the net. You can actually download maybe a P spice, which is a personal spice. If you have T spice, it is all the all the more better, which is standard spice. You can also have any other EDA tool which manipulates or which replicates or mimics spikes. So, you should have this model available, one of the very standard tools for circuit simulation. Uh, for all this is all meant for circuit simulation and very, very important tool or very, very widely used tool across industry as well as in academia. Uh, then uh, we will look into what are the spice models available to us. There are various model equation for level 1, level 2 and level 3 of spice. What are these levels and what are the governing equations available with that and then we will be recapitulating our whole lecture plan. Let us look at the uh, MOSFET. Uh, again, I will, I will like you to maybe I can draw it here itself, the same figure I have been drawing it for the last few lectures and something like this. Right. This is what the structure which is seen in front of you and you have been learning it for quite a long time, by this time it must be you must be aware of all these structures available here. So, at the source drain and gate right. Now, you see therefore, this gate is actually having an oxide layer here right and I discussed with you in the previous turn that this oxide will be given by a oxide capacitance C ox, there will be also a C depletion here. C depletion which will be available and the C ox and C depletion will be in series to each other. This we also discussed. So, that together is basically my C G B 
CGB primarily means get to bulk. So, I get 1 upon CGB is almost equal to 1 by C ox plus 1 by C depletion, right. As I discussed with you earlier, therefore, though C ox is fixed constant depending upon the value of T ox and the value of uh, permittivity of the uh, material which you have taken as dielectric, this C depletion is basically bias dependent quantity and therefore, this will go on varying as you change the bias and therefore, CGB is obviously a strong function of the bias. This is CGB right. Now, let me come to other items here. This is done. We have done with this one right. We now come to CGD and CGS. Again, if you look at the figure here CGD and CGS, if you even if you draw here like this source and drain and you have gate here. See, this is highly this is basically a metal. So, you will have large electrons here. You will also have large electrons here by virtue of the doping because you have done a doping which is a very high concentration at this end and this end. Once you have done that and you and it is separated by a dielectric here, therefore, this C G S gate to source is basically the capacitance formed by virtue of large amount of charge carriers at the source end and at the gate end and this is basically your C G S. Same thing same logic can be applied to C G D. So, this is C G D right. So, I have got C G S I have got C G D. So, these are the two capacitances which are there why because they are primarily there because you have a large concentration gradient between the two or there is a large concentration of charge carrier separated by a dielectric medium in between the two right. Now, if you reduce the doping concentration of this region or this region you actually lower the charge and therefore, you lower the capacitance right. But the cost you pay for it is that now since your n plus will have a lower charge you will have lower current not only that the depletion thickness will depletion thickness which was available earlier more on this side will now extend more towards the source side as well. So, there will be large drop in the depletion region the voltage which you apply on the drain side there will be a large drop across this depletion region. So, if you apply so let us say you apply 1 volt here actual voltage visible here will be maybe just 0 0.8 volts maybe. I hope I hope I am able to explain to you what I am trying to say that by changing now the doping concentrations I can actually change the value of CGS and CGD right and this that is quite important. So, with this we have finished with this and this let us come to the last two which is CSB and CDB. CSB is source to bulk and CDB is drain to bulk as you can as, as I discussed with you this is the bulk which you see in front of you this is a P type substrate and therefore, there will be always a depletion region here as well as here. So, if you can see here uh, if I have a substrate here and if I apply a bias here then there will be depletion region here there will be depletion region here. This depletion region is what this is P n plus right. So, there will be depletion region here this is positively biased suppose this is n type MOSFET I make it 0 let us suppose no effect, but still there will be depletion region here make it more negative this depletion region becomes larger and larger this side and this side right. So, so you get the point therefore, that I will be able to do large amount of variation therefore, this so this is basically a large amount of there will be large amount of holes available here there will be large number of electrons available here separated by a dielectric layer depletion region not conventionally dielectric, but devoid of any free charge carriers. Therefore, this will act as C D B similarly they, this will act as C uh, S B. So, what I get from here is therefore, that finally, you will have what you will have C S B and C D B and this therefore, C G D C G B is composed of C ox and C depletion. C G S and C G D are by virtue of charge carriers and the capacitance per unit area between gate and drain in gate and source and C S B and C D B are between source and bulk and drain and bulk. With this knowledge let us discuss each one of them individually now. The C C G S and C G D can be again broken down into two major components. The first one is basically the CMOS overlap capacitance. Please remember in my first slide when I was discussing MOSFET, I discussed with you that there will be a lateral diffusion of charge carriers from source and drain. So, there is a lateral diffusion taking place in this direction fine, there is a lateral diffusion which is happening along this direction. When there is a lateral diffusion taking place here, 
the effective L actually reduces as I again discussed with you. But not only that you see very important part that now you have some part of the gate which tends to overlap with the drain and the source which is which is which part this part and this part right. Now, what is happening unlike in the previous case now you have direct overlap between the two charges separated by a dielectric this is defined as my overlap capacity right. So, what I am trying to say is so if this is the polysilicon gate which you see this is my source and drain and this is this is the overlap which has happened right this overlap. So, this picture is nothing but the cut picture along the y direction. So, this is a cut here I am taking a photograph from the top this sup suppose this distance is x d which is the x d is basically my overlap distance overlap distance right and x d and l d is the uh, effective length which you see in front of you right. Then we define C G S O and C D O O basically means overlap here. So, C G S O assuming that this x d is same on both direction how because this doping and this doping is again the same source doping and drain doping is exactly the same. Then we assume that this x d on the source side say x d s is exactly equals to x d d which is x d s is the source doping on the source side is exactly equals to the source doping on drain side assuming what assuming that the doping concentration is same on the source and the drain side is same. If you assume this to be true then I get C G S O equals to C D O equals to C ox oxide layer per capacitance into X D into W. W is the width width is which direction this is the width right and X D is this dimension. So, basically this is the area right and this was oxide capacitance per unit area. So, you get you what, what do you what do you what do you get from here is basically the total gap. So, C G C G S O and C O is basically my oxide cap uh, sorry overlap capacitance total overlap capacitance C ox is the oxide capacitance per unit area X d into W is nothing but the area. So, area gets cancelled out and I get the total capacitance available to me by virtue of the uh, this mm, mm, uh, depletion capacitances or overlap capacitances. Now, after you have understood what are the various criteria of overlap. So, so in most technologies today you do have overlap. So, C overlap is one of the primary reason you do have C G S and C G D right. The second one is which which uh, which is uh, the channel capacitance and this is what I was discussing with you this C G channel capacitance which is C G B gate to bulk across the channel. Let me come to that and explain to you till now till now what we were looking is we were looking into we were looking into the uh, the most significant part of a MOS component are channel capacitance which consists of channel capacitance on the source side. So, you will have between gate and you will have between source right as I discussed with you between gate and drain and between gate and and, and, and the bulk or the body. So, there will be three component here gate source gate drain and gate gate and the bulk and gate and the body. So, I define C G S as the gate to source capacitance C C G C D is gate to drain gate to drain and we got C G B gate to bulk right. Now, let us see how it works out let us suppose uh, I have a I have a device which is something like this. So, I am now understand I am using MOS as a two terminal device all right what are the two terminals source is grounded gate I am giving one potential and drain I am giving another potential. So, it is just two terminal one is gate and a, a drain is also let us suppose grounded does not matter at this stage drain it is abandoned. Now, what will happen is when you have cut off mode. So, let me come to the next stage in the cut off mode when V g is less than V t h right is less than 0 there will be no channel formed as I discussed with you and hence the total gate capacitance appears between gate and body. So, it will be fully between gate and body. So, out of the so out of the three here gate source gate there and gate body all the capacitance will be governed by gate and body. There will be no contribution from gate and source and gate and drain why because there is no charge which will contribute. See because it is all fully depleted there is no uh, uh, there is no free charge carriers available here every so everything has been pushed back you have a depletion layer here there is no contribution for source and drain side further the drain and source side have been actually made to ground state. Now, in the resistive region when your gate voltage is just above the threshold at that point of time an inversion layer is formed as an inversion layer is formed there will be always a there will be so, so you have an inversion layer formed is formed 
and therefore, your bulk contribution goes to 0. Why? Because now you have a layer of electron which screens the potential or which screens the charge and therefore, the bulk will not be able to add to the total overall potential and therefore, your C G C B which is basically your bulk potential goes to 0 which means that if you look at this graph here, this was initially when your gate voltage was 0 cut off, when it was cut off the whole potential as I discussed with you appears between gate and body therefore, the total gate potential was how much W L C ox. So, why it was basically like this because C depletion was infinitely large or was basically uh, infinitely large and as a result you will have only W L C ox 0, there will be no depletion capacitance and therefore, the overall charge will be 0. As you reach towards the threshold voltage somewhere here, since there is a screening phenomena, the gate component will go to 0. So, this is what is happening, it goes to 0 just at the at the threshold marking, this, this, this suddenly falls to 0. Now, what happens as it falls to 0, the capacitance is taken care of by the source and drain right and therefore, the total gate capacitance is assuming that, that there is no potential applied is equally distributed between source and drain right and therefore, they become equal. So, uh, what I do I get W L C ox by 2. So, I had initially W L C ox now I get W L C ox by 2 at what point at V t just less than V t I get W L C ox by 2 here. So, it was initially 0 there was no contribution of C G there was no contribution of there was no contribution of C G C S or C G C D here but exactly at this point there is a contribution exactly at the threshold voltage there is a point there is a contribution. So, what you see is exactly at this stage right where this goes to 0 everything is taken care of by at least half of it gate to source gate to channel uh, sorry source and gate to channel drain side. Since individual of them is W L C ox by 2 if you simply add them together I get the total W L C ox because they are in parallel actually. So, if they are parallel C 1 plus C 2 I get total W L C ox and as you know therefore, increase V g uh, the total capacitance still remains the same which is W L C ox, but how it get distributed between channel between the source and drain is a big question and it is still being washed into, but at this stage at least for the VLSI design codes which we will be doing it, we will assume that there will be no contribution from the body once the gate voltage crosses threshold voltage and its only contribution is through source and drain and we will also assume for time being that they are equally taken care of by source and drain which is W L C ox by 2. W L is the area C ox is the oxide capacitance per unit area and by 2 right. So, this is what we will be discussing uh, or we will be assuming it to be true. Now, we come to the third part of the capacitance model and that is known as the junction capacitance. Junction capacitance if you look at the again the channel here this is basically my line diagram of the figure then this is the channel this is basically your n plus region right. So, there are 5 surfaces available here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 1 is basically towards the channel. So, this is towards the channel. If you look very closely 5 is actually towards the bulk right, 4 is across a layer. So, generally what happens is that to make two device isolated from each other we give a diffusion well around the device. So, what we do is this is n type we give a p well around the device. So, there will be a p well sort of a p plus diff, uh, diffusion layer or a diffusion layer available here. So, I will have surrounded p type here, so that the two devices do not get shorted with each with respect to each other. So, what you will see is you will have one junction 1 to channel. So, 1 to channel there will be the one junction which is basically uh, n plus uh, p channel and which is n plus p. You will also have 5 with uh, with bulk why 5 because 5 is attached to the bulk 4, 3 and 2 are attached to this p plus diffusion layer. So, there are 5 junction capacitances available to you at this stage and they are all area dependent. So, if for example, if you make your w large who will get affected phi will get affected right because w into l is w into this distance is basically 5. If you increase w it, uh, it also influence 1 in 1. So, 1 will get affected phi will get affected right but prima facie uh, it looks like 4 and 2 will not get affected, 3 will get affected. So, if you change w uh, 1, 5 and 3 will get affected, if you change l as the name suggests I will get 4 and 3 get affected. 
So, if you change W by L ratio aspect ratio, this junction capacitance becomes a sensitive function of these values of voltages right and this becomes a bit complicated as far as this uh, deriving these capacitance is concerned. Why we are doing it? At the end of the day I want the total capacitance available in a device for finding out the delay and therefore the maximum frequency of operation. That is what I was asking that there will be therefore large number of p n junctions which will contribute to the total junction capacitance available to us. So, there will be how many p n junctions? There will be actually if you look very carefully there will be 5 p n junctions available right and the 5 p n junctions will be all in parallel and therefore, we need to add them up to get the total capacitance available to us. However, they are strong functions of applied voltages and parameters right. If you look here further and, and, and get, get the picture correct, yes if you look here uh, this is defined as x j, x j is the uh, diffusion length or basically the thickness of the n plus drain layer right and w is the width of the area. So, the number 3 has got an area w into x j whereas, number 5 has an area this is an area which is w into l similarly 2 has an area x j into l right uh, x j into sorry x dot into l is not l not w into l, but it is basically w into this this dimension let us suppose we call it as whatever we call it as say uh, maybe drain d let me call it d the w into d right we will have number 2 which is this one we will have x j into what into d into d. So, what will be 1? 1 will be basically w into x j right and number 4 will be what? Number 4 will be d into x j d into x j. So, these two will be behaving in the same manner and these two will be behaving in the same manner and this will be behaving in the opposite manner. So, these things should be clear to you as far as uh, notational symbols are concerned right and we will be able to formulate the policy. Now, what happens since p n junction diode theory is well known to you from your basic days what we do is we just convert this into ordinary reversed biased or forward biased p n junction diodes and the capacitance derived thereof can be directly fed into as the junction capacitance of this one. And if you look therefore, it is given by this formula which you see in front of you this is the generalized formula sorry this is the exact formula for which we are using it uh, where phi 0 is basically the built in potential and v is the applied bias. What is built in potential? See built in potential primarily means that if you look if you look back in this slide and if you look at clearly at this point this is basically n plus and p right even if you do not apply any bias there will be a small depletion region which is will be available here right. The uh, built in potential is defined as uh, the amount of potential required to cross this depletion barrier fine. So, the amount of voltage required so phi built in is basically the built in is basically the amount of voltage amount of applied voltage to cross the depletion region right. So, this is known as phi built in or phi built in is the basically the amount of voltage required to do that which means the amount of voltage to cross the barrier why is it like that? So, that will be explained in this slide. See when you apply the bias the built in voltage and the applied voltage will be in opposite sense and therefore, there is a negative sign available here. If you look very closely uh, to this equation to this, to this equation this negative sign is primarily because of the fact that when you have a built in voltage and if you apply a voltage which is reversing the built in voltage there will be a negative sign available to you. So, when you do a reverse bias uh, sort of mechanism this voltage goes on increasing in the negative sense as a result the subtraction of this minus this goes on decreasing uh, decreasing and therefore, C j increases and this is true also that means if the depletion thickness becomes larger and larger the junction capacitance starts to rise up which means that therefore, coming back to the previous slide if you therefore, have if you therefore, have positive voltage applied here as the drain voltage and you go on increasing the drain bias more and more this depletion thickness becomes more and more and therefore, phi built in becomes more and more right and not only phi built in V also increases become more and more and therefore, the capacitance actually becomes larger because you are actually increasing the area. We also this is a generalized formula this is the this is the C J 0 is the junction capacitances when you do not have any applied biases when your applied biases are 0 and is given by this formula. So, as you can see here as this bias increases here this quantity becomes larger and larger 1 minus this quantity goes smaller and smaller and therefore, C j goes on increasing. So, when V increases right when V increases uh, 
the denominator term that is uh, de de the denominator term will go on actually decreasing and therefore, C j will go on increasing right and A is the area of the cross section between the two right. This is quite interesting phenomena which occurs here. Once you have understood the capacitance part and we have been able to find out what the capacitance looks like or how capacitance works out. We so, so, end of the day all the MOS capacitance is made up of 5 capacitances gate to bulk, gate to source, gate to drain, source to bulk and drain to bulk right and they will remain almost bias dependent and also structural dependent. Uh, we also look at, look at source into drain resistance. What we say is that the source to drain resistance will be depending upon the contact resistance RC is the contact resistance here and will depend upon the resistance offered by the device itself. So, you please see a MOSFET if you look very carefully as I discussed with you. Uh, if you look at the MOSFET structure and, and understanding it properly, uh, you, will, you will see that uh, when the device is in the on state this n plus you will have a thin region here which is n plus and you will have n here or maybe, maybe n here not n plus and you will have source drain and so on and so forth as I discussed with you right. If you look here the resistance offered by this channel is one part, the resistance offered by this region and this region is another because the current will be flowing in the, in this manner. So, conventional current will be flowing in opposite termination and there will be also a resistance offered by the contact between the metal and the semiconductor. This is the metal metal layer which takes the current from the MOSFET and this is the semiconductor. So, this will be a metal semiconductor contact right and therefore, there will be a potential drop here and therefore, there will be a resistive element here. So, there will be one resistive element comp corresponding to this and there will be another resistive element corresponding to this. So, this will be the channel resistance and this will be the this will be the contact resistance this will be RC right. So, this was this. So, this was what what is what I meant to RC is the contact resistance LSD is the source drain region divided by L into R sheet happens to be the value and this is how you calculate the value of RSD source drain resistance right. So, this is the typical value which you calculate for all practical purposes. Now, when you have understood R and C individually without going into details because uh, at least for digital VLSI design at this stage you do not require too much knowledge about uh, all the resistances all the capacitance from a many detailed point of view whatever has been told to you will be enough to calculate the values of resistances and capacitances for typically circuits which you will be handling in this course right. Uh, now, uh, an important uh, uh, an important idea or an important uh, discussion is primarily on SPICE right. Uh, SPICE is basically a model uh, SPICE is a model which is basically used by large number of circuits. So, SPICE is basically circuit simulator. So, this SPICE is basically a circuit simulator. I will recommend that uh, you please download this from the website. Uh, it is op it's open source available to us and you can actually simulate small circuits in that it is almost like an ORCAD tool. Uh, for a circuit simulator and you can use this for MOS devices and MOSFETs only there are large number of model files available and they are pretty accurate uh, and easily done for at least 15 to 20 number of active devices per schematic. And it is a very general purpose circuit simulator. So, you, can, you do have it is more of a plug and play. So, you have resistors, you have MOSFETs, you have capacitors, you have large number of battery sources types of profile everything and you can do it. SPICE allows you to do three types of simulation one is known as DC right another is AC and the third is basically your transient. So, all these three they allow to do it DC means you apply a fixed bias right you apply a fixed DC source and you try to find out the current and voltage at any appropriate node in the circuit. What is AC exactly you want to find the current and voltage at any appropriate node in the circuit, but then the current source or the voltage source is basically AC in nature. So, I will have A sin omega t sort of available to me or whatever uh, maybe a AC wave in general. What is transient? Transient is again you are not giving a DC or AC, but you, you are giving a pulse. So, let me say you give a small pulse here or you give a small pulse here. Then with this pulse how does the circuit behave that is known as a transient analysis. So, this is a very small time domain analysis, this is a large time domain and this is almost equals to 0 DC as you can understand is basically a non time to 0 analysis. MOS device SPICE model as we know of it has got level 3 levels of models but level 1, uh, level 2 and level 3 right. Uh, let me start with level 3 is a semi empirical model semi empirical primarily means that out of large amount of experimentation using fitting parameter concepts I have been able to have 
the IV characteristics of MOS device in level 3. Level 2 is a detailed analytical MOSFET model. So, detailed analytical MOSFET model which, which is available to us by taking second order effects also into consideration. Level 1 primarily refers to the square law. So, whatever we have been teaching till now, whatever I have been de uh, delivering to you across this lecture all are all basically square law models of IV characteristics and level 1 uses that model for all practical purposes. Uh, all second order effects are included in MOS 2 and MOS 3, which means all second order effects are included here SCE and SCE. There is no, this is no SCE. Level 1 does not have any short um, uh, model here. So, how do you do it? You insert dot model statement, you insert when you do a simulation. So, when we give you the assignments, I will tell you how to do it, but you do a dot model statement in order to do a particular simulation, right. What is the, let us look at the equivalent structure with SPICE users. It is pretty interesting and uh, since now you have understood the various capacitance and resistive model, it will be become becoming very easier for you to understand. Let us look at uh, the structure here and uh, let us suppose source drain and I, as I was discussing with you, right, I have a bulk here, right, I have a bulk here. Now, let us, uh, let us look at RD, RD is what? The resistance offered by the drain end. This RD will consists of the contact resistance here plus the resistance offered at this point, right. You will have also RS which is basically the resistance between these two points as well as the contact resistance this is S, this is D, agreed. Now, when the device is operating as a current source, you will have this being replicated as a current source. So, this is the, that, that current source which you see. So, I have RS, RD, RS, I have ID which is basically MOSFET as a current source. Let us look at this is CGD gate to drain, <coughs> this is gate, gate to drain remember we just, just now discussed if there is overlap capacitance, junction capacitance and this variable y because it is bias dependent. You have CGS, CGS which is this one gate to source. So, I have gate given positive this is my source end, this is my source and this is my drain end right. I also have a fourth terminal now which is basically my bulk right. And so, this is my bulk which you see in front of me, this is drain, this is gate, this is bulk and this is source. So, gate to bulk is basically my this gate to bulk is this one. So, I will have gate to gate to bulk why? Because directly body, so this basically is my body capacitance right. So, I have three capacitance CGD, CGD, CGS and CGB right. I have got two so current uh, two resistances R S R D. I have a current source here. Let us look at this, 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 and this. If you look back as I discussed with you, this is basically your P. So you will have a diode which is something like this, right? This is V S B, right? And this is sourced. So you will have two two diodes. One will be towards drain end. So just to just to remind you, just to remind, just to concentrate on the lower side. I will have P type semiconductor N plus right, I will apply a drain voltage here V D. So, if I if I have P type here and N type, I will have uh, something like this which is nothing but V S B on the uh, on source to bulk this. So, this is basically your C D B, this is with V D B, this is V D B, drain to bulk right, this is drain to bulk as a diode. Why? Because this is reverse bias junction diode. There will be also a capacitance which is C D B. C D B is what? Between drain to bulk, between drain to bulk. So, there will be capacitance also between this. This is again a voltage variable capacitance which you see we already discussed in our previous slides. This will be again therefore, this is N plus P. So, you will have a something like this, right? This will be the C uh, sorry, this will be V source to bulk, right? And there will be capacitance which will be C. Uh, source to bulk right again a variable capacitance. So, this is the overall and they will be in parallel to each other. So, you see the, the, these two are in parallel to each other, these two are in parallel to each other and therefore, this is the equivalent structure of a spice model. For PMOS all the polarities and current source direction to be reversed. I leave as an exercise to you to please do the this is spice model for NMOS, please do for spice model for do spice model for PMOS as well. So, please do it for PMOS as well. Okay? So, we will be we are almost concluding the lecture now and giving you the various progress of spice model equations which we use.
as I discussed with you for level 1 we have already taken into consideration id will be given as k prime by 2 k prime is nothing but mu l k prime is nothing but mu l c oxide by 2 into w by l effective 2 into v g s minus v t h into v d s minus v d s square 1 plus lambda v d s this is again with c l m in saturation region as I discussed with you uh, it will not be a strong function of VGS, but if you VDS, but if you take CLM into consideration, it will be a function of VDS. It takes this into consideration for all practical purposes. Again, I take 1 plus lambda VDS as the continuity equation, continuity term between these two points when, when VDS equals to VGS minus VTH at the starting of the onset. As I discussed with you, the 5 electrical parameters which you see in front of you are all basically process dependent parameters and they can be easily found out by the if you understand the doping and the structural parameters of the device. We come to spice level 2 model equations and these spice 2 level model, model equations are more accurate as compared to level 1 and uh, I will not go into details of how they are formed, but this is the equation which you see in front of you for the drain current in the linear region and this is the saturation region right and this is saturation region which you get this is the VD sat for the saturation region. So, please understand here rather than speaking as uh, this is basically your velocity saturated uh, drain to source voltage. So, that is that is the reason I written this to be as V d sat right and it depends upon the value of V g s minus V f b. V f b is defined as the flat band voltage uh, difference between the metal and semiconductor. Uh, as you can see from all these discussion as you increase the value of V g s prime of a c your V d sat also starts to increase which we have already seen in our previous discussion even even in level 1 MOS device if you increase V g s make overdrive larger you end up having a larger uh, uh, threshold uh, larger uh, uh, this thing uh, th uh, threshold available to you larger pinch off point in the voltage available to you. We come to the last uh, spice model which we will be discussing there are actually large number of levels, but I will be concentrating only on level till level 3. It is it's a bit complicated because it is more of semi empirical. So, what you do is you do a large amount of data analysis and do large amount of experimentation, then do a curve fitting and then you take the coefficients of the uh, line of best fit and that will be your uh, uh, MOSFET level 3 model. So, we do a large amount of manipulation here in order to achieve the best results. The idea is to achieve or to get a uh, the value of IDVD at a much faster pace. So, if you want to do a back of the envelope calculation without going into details of it, level 1 to level 3 is sufficient to take care of all your requirements. But if you want it to be more accurate taking other effects into consideration, uh, you need to go at higher level. The price you pay for it is of course, the computational complexity at the time taken for the algorithms to converge. So, what you see from here is that in this case especially in level 3 you also take uh, bulk charge which means that the how does your bulk influence your influence your uh, threshold voltage. So, which is not available in level 1 and to a larger extent in level 2 is available in level 3 and therefore, if you change V s b drastically you would actually see a change in threshold voltage in level 3. So, if you want to use bulk uh, uh, substrate effects which is body effect uh, try to go for level 3 spice model. So, let us me recapitulate what we did today. Uh, what we did in this lecture for this lecture, uh, what we did was we uh, try to analyze the dynamic behavior of MOSFET, not the behavior at least, but the parameters required to understand the dynamic behavior. Dynamic behavior means that you apply the voltage and then it is varying and I am trying to read how the capacitance is varying with respect to applied voltage and so on and so forth and therefore, trying to predict resistances capacitances based on that and therefore, the total overall delay of the system. And therefore, uh, we have understood the various capacitances available. There are 5 capacitances which primarily can be broken down and each can be individually uh, individually calculated and therefore, the total capacitance can be found out. We also understood the resistance, how a resistance is formed. It is formed by the channel resistance as well as the contact resistance source and drain. Uh, we finally, uh, ended up with spice general purpose simulator. What is a spice? Though you require a larger amount, I will leave as an exercise to you to please go through spice simulator, its corresponding manual and you can come back to me if you have any queries regarding that. Level 2 and level 3 are generally meant for second order effects and level 1 is meant for uh, without any second order effects and they are straightforward, pretty very simple early uh, uh, prediction of the current vo current voltage characteristics. Uh, with these words, I would like to thank you for your uh, patient hearing and uh, we will continue with this topic in the next class. Thank you.